This is a funny thing. This is a little impromptu clip that I thought we'd do uh, with no other reason than to chat to this young man here. Young, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is Patrick. And um, Patrick got in touch with us uh, through our website, through, the, uh, through YouTube, through the internet. Um, and he is a new wannabe about to be, about to be uh, liverboard. So I thought this would be an interesting little impromptu chat with someone who has literally, literally, this last week or so quit. Yeah, this is week quit. two of yeah. retirement. So, first of all, before we begin, <laughs> Patrick, this is a little beer cooler for you. Oh, thank so you very welcome much. to Thailand. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> I think we I'm going to need this. We don't normally do this. Chin chin. Chin. Right. We've chatted to lots of liverboards who have done this already. Uh, your thing is completely different. It's the other side of the coin, which is someone who is about to become liverboard. About to do it. Yeah. All right. So first of all, just tell us a bit about yourself, where you're from, and okay. uh, your situation. Aussie. Um, been working my whole life and 48 so not young um, but you know for a number of reasons I've always wanted to try cruising love boats grew up with you know my father had yachts um, so for me now is the time to actually go and try doing it so you have been career man yeah yeah so um, professionally employed and um, you know, longest holiday or out of work has been two weeks in the entire career and you know I just got to the point where you, know, you start seeing people around you pass away or not enjoying life and you know, the circumstances were such that I could say you know what I don't need to keep doing what I'm doing I can actually go and try living on board, cruising, that whole lifestyle. And whether it's for one year or a decade, I don't know. So what gave you that impetus to actually make that leap from being full-time employed, earning money, to this leap into the unknown? <laughs> People like you are inspiration. Uh, but, you know, I just got to a point personally where I just wasn't enjoying the job, um, earning very good money, uh, but you get to a point where you say, you know, money's not everything and, you know, I've got enough to be comfortable for a while, certainly not rich by any stretch, but I've already got the yacht um, and it's time to try and live in the dream. So you see people like yourselves and there's plenty of other people out there that are doing it. Um, you don't need to have millions in the bank, I don't think, to be able to do it. It would be nice, of course. It would be nice, <laughs> absolutely. You know, and no doubt everybody wants a bigger boat or the latest gear, but uh, a lot of people are doing it um, on smaller boats without a lot of stuff. Um, and you just say, you don't need it all. You know? So um, it's almost, for me, going to be a... You know, looking for what's important in life and you know? trying to find myself as much as anything else. So that's the positive aspect. What do you think is the biggest hurdle for you to make? What's the biggest leap? Yeah, it's getting out of that comfort zone. So for me, you know, going to work every day, the biggest decision was what shirt to iron before I went to work. It and doesn't change you though. <laughs> well, the wardrobe probably gets a bit less <laughs> and you don't have to iron it yeah. so yeah. Uh, you know now there's some life choices to make so you know the do, do you feel a sense of trepidation do absolutely you? Yeah. Uh, you know there's the great unknown what are, you know the nights I don't sleep it's like what the hell have I done um, thrown away a, a very good job that you know other people would be you know potentially envious of you yeah. know I can always go back to the career, uh, but you know, if I do that, then I'll never get to experience what you and Liz have done uh, and have that adventure. So it's the fear of the unknown is definitely a big issue. Mm -hmm. um, can I do it? 
I have to try. What are the so. things you think that you possibly couldn't do then? Well, I don't know. I mean, it's that's it's the unknown, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, right. So, you know, these days with so much technology available, you know, you can have three or four GPSs on board, you can have your autopilots, you know. So, you know, I'm physically, you know, still able to hoist a sail and, and lift the anchor up. So everything else after that is hopefully doable. Mm. But it's... Um, it's having the courage of your own convictions to go and do it. Mm. So, as I say, I, I don't think I can afford to do it forever, but if I don't do it now, then I'll probably never do it. That and is a very important yeah. thing. And I don't, want to, I don't want to go to my grave with the regret. Absolutely. So, yeah. you know, I could go and have a you know, career for the next 10, 12 years, get to a retirement age, but by then I'm too old potentially, you know, to enjoy, mm -hmm. you know, what I want to go and do. So that, that to me is a big thing. Do it now while I'm young. And the other thing we were talking about. <laughs> very young, I would say. <laughs> and, and you are, we, we spoke about this the other day, you know, mm -hmm. the, the average age of a liverboard is, it is older than us. Yeah. Um, but we were talking earlier about your calendar yes. and how you're still getting these reminders that come up meetings. for your weekly meetings yeah. and now you have this luxury of being able to yeah well I, I think i called it island time and it's going to be very tough to take the watch off mm. and not worry about the fact that it's whatever the time is and it's dinner time or you know so that's a big change for me it's as i say it's only week two so it's going to be tough to get used to that idea that i don't need to be in a meeting somewhere there isn't a timetable to meet. Um, that's going to be a, bit, a big yeah, adjustment. Our, our timetables are slightly different. As I said earlier, the, the daily timetable, we have a tidal. Mm. And then other than that, it is uh, seasonal. Yeah. So can I yeah. sail down that passage at yeah. this time of year? Yeah. Days of the week. So, um, yeah. yeah. So if it means you've got to hang out somewhere like here for another month till the weather's right. What a shame, eh? <laughs> <laughs> I can think of worse places to be. Yeah, right. <laughs> Usually a meeting room somewhere. <laughs> yeah. The other thing, and it's slightly personal here, we were talking about companionship. And yeah. um, obviously for Liz and myself, you know... Yeah, very fortunate that you've got each other. Yeah, and uh, I think, we, you know, we appreciate that. And uh, for yourself, you know, you're on your own. How, how do you think that's going to be for you? I don't know. Yeah. And that's, you know, that's one of the, the concerns, I guess, that, you know, I could be travelling around and be lonely uh, but I have to do it for myself and of so, course you could carry on working 60 hours a week traveling to yeah. places and still be absolutely lonely. exactly yeah. yeah you can be in the you know, busiest city in the world and still be lonely mm. so you know from there or from in the middle of the ocean you know, I've I've been alone long enough to be comfortable with my own self so mm. Um, you know, as I said earlier, you know, for me, travelling and seeing places, you want to be able to share that. So that, that for me is a big thing, to be able to share the experience, mm -hmm. um, but we'll see. Yeah. So, uh, you, know, you can't force that to happen. Um, worst case is I do it for a while and figure it's not for me and I go back to a career. And then you can turn around and say, well, I did try that. Yeah, and exactly. you don't lie on your deathbed yeah. with, with that regret. Yeah, so, exactly. yeah. Yeah. Life's too short. There's so many people have said to me, life's too short, go and do it. And, so, and, and they're right. So, um, and th and this, is, this is why I'm talking to Patrick, and it just occurred to me this afternoon, we've had a couple of beers already. Yeah. We're not particularly, we won't gear up for this, but yeah. I think it's important that people out there who, they're kind of in between they're sort of one stage behind you yeah. they're, they're still thinking well I cannot can I do this and this is why I think it's it's really important to speak to someone like yeah. you who says you know what I can do it yeah um, you've still got some way to go before you actually get on the boat and live on it but yeah. you've made that initial jump and yeah. I think that is and the you don't biggest. need and you don't need a big investment and Liz mentioned earlier that you know somebody said oh you know after an, the next million but you know I'm certainly not a millionaire my boat's not flash but it will suffice yep 
and I have enough to keep me going for an indefinite period. I don't know how long it will be. Mm. And you know, some of our conversations have been around what it costs, and for everybody, it's going to be different. Of course. So, yeah, um, you know, I take it one day at a time, and um, you know, that's that's just going to be an interesting way to live for a while. So, right, and that's half looking forward to it. Yeah, that's what it's all about. Yeah. yeah. So listen. Patrick, I've got to thank very much for putting him on the spot. Patrick, yeah. I don't think he was really into this idea, but um, he was based in Singapore, which of course in this part of the world is just down the road, and made a point of coming up to come and chat to us and come and see yeah. us. And Interrogate. <laughs> I'm not sure we've given you the right answers, but uh, you know, we've, well, we've, uh, it's an opinion. You've given me some, some, a lot of things to think about, and I value that. So yeah. thank you. And, and you know, you're doing the right thing. So thank you. Thank you. And fair winds and good luck. Chin chin. Chin chin.